everybody it is cinnamon cooney your art sherpa and today i'm so excited to be coming on this live stream to show you how step by step you can paint this fabulous magical scene with this cool mystical tree and this fun deer on the mic is my husband john hey guys he's gonna help me show you how you paint this at home by going with one of our many robotic cameras zooming in on the action making sure you see every color mix every painting technique everything you need to know so you can make this for yourself at home i mean of course you're welcome to just show up this morning and have a little bit of coffee and just watch but if you're painting this he's going to make sure you have all that access he's also going to be here trying to catch a few of the questions during the live stream so questions that you ask may get answered during this live i want to thank everybody for waking up <laughs> and showing up for our first getting creative with coffee coffee creative right mm -hmm. So actually to that end, let's all just take a minute and enjoy a sip of our fresh, <sighs> warm morning yes. brew. It's true. It's time for coffee. It is time for mm. coffee. It's that time. So I'm really excited about this. this is a little different. We're going a little bit earlier. And what I like about that is, is that it lets people in different time zones maybe come and show up for live. Mm -hmm. If you're wanting to make sure that you make all these free live painting tutorials, the best thing that I can say is, Definitely subscribe to the YouTube channels. There's two of them. Follow the Facebook page, get onto the website, make an account, sign up for the newsletter. And if you're regularly showing up to our live streams, be sure to sign up for our text notifications, which is right there. So if you go onto your mobile phone, not Messenger on Facebook or in the comments on Facebook, into your mobile phone to the number 33222, type in the word the Art Sherpa, all one word. When we're live, we'll tell you. Only sign up for that if you want to know when we're live, because we actively do tell you when we're live. And we got a lot going on. So you would be knowing about every single event that we're doing. All right, you guys ready to jump in? Talk about I'm the materials, ready. talk about the colors, talk about how we're going to do this really cool project. There's colors right there. There's some colors. There's cool colors, the colors. There's cool materials. So the base color palette I think I'm going to work with from today is titanium white. You could use um, Mars black, lamp black, carbon black. That's not really going to matter. This is teal. Um, you could use aqua green, um, teal, turquoise, any of those color ranges. You just want a really kind of bright, saturated kind of turquoise blue. This is quinacridone magenta, but again, any good magenta will work. Doxazine purple. And then just in case you don't have this, I also have phthalo blue and phthalo green. When you mix them together, you get phthalo turquoise. Now, I have some really cool, fun, other weird art materials and techniques we're going to be doing today. I'm probably going to be showing you more techniques in this. Then I haven't shown you before than I've done in any video. I think you're going to find it interesting. We're going to be using our fine liner applicator. So fine line, and you can get these in most art stores. I believe you can get them in uh, Michael's uh, right now, maybe elsewhere, but for sure confirm there. I've seen them. And it's a, it is this really cool little fine line maker. It's got this little needle thing that you put in it and you can make these really sort of, I don't even know if you can see it, fine lines. Now, hopefully I don't have the mix too thin um, because that might make drips on this one, but it is really fantastic for the type of work we're going to be doing today. I may just have to thicken it up as we go. I'm shaking it up. Also, I'm going to be using fluid paints. So this is titanium white and fluid. This is carbon black. Any black would work. Guess what? This is just as effective. You could use Deco Art Americana uh, Lamp Ebony Black, and they have titanium white too. And these are just a few dollars per bottle. So don't not do the project because that other cool things we'll be using, sponges. Check out them sponges, right? Sponges. So this is a texturing tool that's going to help us do that. And our surprise tool. You guys ready for the surprise tool? Here it is. <gasps> yes. Plastic wrap. Now, listen, if you save the plastic wrap off of your canvas, um, it works really well, too. So you can upcycle or reuse products if you have just any little. Don't use grocery bags, though. Don't use grocery bags. Here's why. The bags that you get from the store, the plastic ones, they have this print on them, and that printing ink comes off really easily. So unless you meant to get that ink onto your canvas, it's a whole big moment. Mm that you're setting yourself up for. That's a little bit sort of challenging. So I'm gonna show you how to use all these materials. Ha <laughs> ha, I tricked John. All right, now over here we have our <laughs> reference, right? <laughs> That's what you live for. <laughs> we have our reference, so this is what we're gonna be using. We do have a picture in picture, and I'm gonna do this 
I liked this piece so much I decided to go a little bit bigger. So we're going to do this on an 11 by 14 surface. This is uh, from Artist Loft. They come in packs. You can use anything, though. It's all fine. We have some wishes on here today from our community, as we like to do. Putting positivity out there. Wendy wishes strength and clarity and recovery for Mark, her boyfriend. And uh, we've had a bunch of wishes come in for treatment and effective cure for Lyme disease, which I think to myself, yes, that would be very cool. Because, like, man, ticks ruin hiking, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> I think the cure for Lyme disease is no ticks. Like, they serve no purpose, right? Let's just get rid of that. Stop killing all the cute animals and kill some of these ugly ones. <laughs> I don't like. I'm just kidding. What did you write in the internet? All right. I'm going to show you how to get to this texture. <laughs> well, you just know somebody will come and defend the tick. Please, please don't tell me wrong. Please, internet, don't come tell me why I'm wrong. I mean, I, you can just be cool about it. <laughs> I, I already know. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Now, I have taken some saran wrap and I balled it up into a little ball. There's a couple ways we can do this. We can lay it flat and pull it up. But that takes a while to dry. So I'm going to just show you how to get the texture from stamping. But to do this, I've got to paint most of this canvas with kind of like, um, you know, a little color coming on. So you got to pick a base color. And I think I'm going to pick. Blue, right, ooh, got a little hair in that. Now it's off. It's just about covering the surface, guys. Just get yeah. some blue just down. Just taking some phthalo blue and I'm just gonna cover the surface. It doesn't need to be neat or tidy, it just needs to be covered. Mm. Because you have to have that first sort of glazing layer that you're getting into as you build up and you do stuff. And you can even hear from that lovely morning scrapey, scrapey, scrape. Who's waking up and doing art? Boy, we've got a full room today. Really? I oh, was we... like, I was like saying to John, I bet we get up and nobody else is up. <laughs> oh, we got like 430 people here right now. That many people are awake? There's more than that. Maybe 440. I don't know. I can't That's see. That's exciting. I think I'm very excited about these Friday segments. We're going to be doing this every Friday at 830. Getting creative with coffee. Hmm. Coffee well, creative streams. Anything that has coffee in it, um, probably okay for me. Look at me go. I'm so energetic in the morning. So this is me as a morning person. You, you know, I feel like I should. This is nighttime. <laughs> it feels like it's nighttime. Because we go we go late a lot. Which we do. Is We're like really hard on me. <laughs> <laughs> the late show with cinnamon. Yeah, I'm not as good at it. You know, I don't have that like late show vibe. I'm kind of like a let's get up. Let's power down a bunch of coffee. Let's listen to little Colton and be like, woo! But, you know, that's me in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, someone said, we, oh, we got over 500 people. Wow, hello, woo! everybody. So, okay. oh, what? Uh, ah, I don't I'm know. Just drying it so we can let it dry. If you got a comment or a question, I'm up for it. Look at me. I'm totally woke up. <laughs> you, you, you go dry and I will click comment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> we're all. We're all woked up this morning. Just get go. She is. I'm not. I'm like, I was up at 5 a.m. driving kids to school because they thought they had something that they didn't have. You ever have that happen? Where your kids, sure, you need to be at school at 5 a.m. And you get up there and you, you're the only parent there. And you're like, are you sure today is the day? And they're like, no, I'm very sure. Very sure. So you get home, find out. Today was not that day. What was not what day? Today was not the day to be at the school at 5 a.m. Oh. <laughs> have you ever had your kids do that? When they, like, they wake you up and they're like, we have a field trip today. We got to go. We have five minutes. We have four minutes. And you're just like so out of it. You're just running out of the house. You don't know what permission slip you've signed. You have no idea what's going on. You just got to get this kid to there because the bus is going to leave. And you get there and there's no one at the school because it's 5 a.m. <laughs> So clearly, we've had a parent morning. <laughs> and the second little one is like, but I think I need to be there at 630. <laughs> Why? I don't know. I feel like I do. There's, a, was. <laughs> there's an emotional feeling. <laughs> <sighs> but she doesn't say that till after I've called her dad and is like, is there a reason Luna has to be there at 630? <sighs> <laughs> and that's what coffee's for. Now, tomorrow. Mm. Uh, wait, no. Next week is uh -huh. no, no kids week. No kids at school. 
If so it's going to be noisy streams, guys. Noisy streams. Noisy streams. I'll tell you right now. We're, I mean, we're still going to do our schedule because we tend to do our schedule, but yeah, it'll be a noisy stream. Do we have any questions? Uh, coffee, there was coffee, 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 coffee. I, <laughs> you know, I was over here lamenting this story. I don't think you had enough you. coffee. Uh, I don't think you're in the spirit of a morning stream. Everyone says that they really love your hair. Thank you so much. It was very weak, so styled it. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea I was like this. Like from like eight to noon, I'm awesome. Everything in the afternoon sort of downhill from there. So there are several people who are out shopping who have stopped in the middle of shopping to watch this stream. Hi, what you buying? What you getting? Uh, groceries apparently for huh? for Thanksgiving. Oh, gro- oh yeah, because everyone does that except us. Because we go. Wait a minute, Thanksgiving's <laughs> when tomorrow? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I balled up my saran wrap while you're shopping. You should grab some of this so you can do this painting project. Let's start out with some just straight up magenta, yo. So you kind of see this is like this. And we're going to start going right here, making this cool texture. Isn't that awesome? Mm -hmm. Maybe you need a little white into it. There we go. A little creamy pink. There's, there were several comments, folks, saying... They were here for the chat and the hangout. And they're going to paint a little later. After, a little later? Like after at a the reasonable coffees. time? At a civilized time? Well, once the coffee's had a chance to, you know, get in there. See, so this is what we're doing with our saran okay. wrap. See, it makes a little texture. Can I ask you something? You can ask me anything you want. doesn't mean I'll have an answer. Okay, so I noticed something cool about your texture. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to zoom into I'm gonna it. I'm going to pull out a little of my magenta while you're zooming and a little bit of my Doc's purple and kind of get a more purpley mix to this. Okay, but over here on your on your canvas, Yes. you managed to get this, uh, to have a really interesting marbled effect with your... Uh, yes. How did you get that to happen? The marbling? Yeah. Okay, so the Saran Wrap naturally wants to do that. So I've got, I've taken... Like two parts of my quinacridone magenta, one tiny smidge, like a ghost pepper, my dock's purple, and I put a little more white into this mix to kind of cream it up so we can see it, mm. all right? Because we want to be able to see this mix. Now, I've got this all balled up, and I'm going to just stamp this in, stampy stamp. And that's how I'm going to get that marbling texture. Gotcha. So there's It a... is not easy on your manicure. I won't lie to you. So you're going to get this cut. So this, that, it naturally gets some of that mixture on the. Yeah, it just is going to do that. And sometimes, like, I got a little bit of the white on there. So I'll have to come here and be like, stamp it out and be like, stop it. Stop it. It's too early in the morning for you. So the big thing is just not to make repeating patterns. The big thing is to not make repeating patterns. And the other thing, like, you can kind of put it in like this and smush it in. Yeah. And then peel it up. So it does It does some different things. That's one of my favorite ones to do where I, like, paint a thing and then put some more, like, loose paint and I put the saran wrap on there and, like, wait 15 minutes and then peel it up. I don't really do it a lot because uh, you got to wait 15 minutes, which is not exciting live TV. <laughs> <laughs> I... <laughs> I'm going to take a little white, like one part white. This is with my artist knife and get a little of my docks purple, as you do, and kind of get more of a purple mix. So still dark, but purple. I want it a shade darker than the pink that I've been doing, and I'm going to get it purple. And I'm thoroughly mixing it with this artist knife, and then I'm sipping my coffee again. Mm. I'm going to be so sad when I run out. Are you? Mm-hmm. That's, we have a K-cup machine. Sad when I run out of coffee in the morning. All right, so it's all loaded. Yes, you are the, loaded this morning. I'm loaded. It's loaded. We loaded. Just making stamps. You're just creating this texture, right? Because as artists, you know, when we change mediums, like when you go from a watercolor to an acrylic, sometimes... You want to capture some of the effects or techniques, but I don't know some of this. I've seen some a lot. I have to say, I've seen a lot of techniques. This definitely comes close to a maneuver. This is the saran wrap maneuver. What are you doing today? I did a saran wrap maneuver. <laughs> I'm thinking. Let the other moms in the school line work <laughs> on that one, right? <laughs> 
<sighs> Just tapping that out, getting that little texture in. That's what we're doing. Just getting that background texture that we're going to build up on. Now I do want a little bit of a lighter one, so I'm going to grab some more white. Isn't that entertaining? Well, I mean, it is for me. It might not be for you, but it is for me. At this point, I have too much of a smooth area in my ball. So I'm going to come around here and tuck some of this up and make a new ball. Ha! <laughs> There we go. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? So a lot of times you would normally think, oh, I would start out maybe with my blue or my purple or different colors um, over a black, but it's actually for these colors to be kind of the bright way we want them to be after we're done. We gotta get them in now. Plus we get to let me tell you, if you're into ASMR, this sound mm -hmm. is now your favorite sound. It goes, I don't know if I... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I just had to share with you. <laughs> I thought you might enjoy. All right. So this, this we recycle it, right? Because we're responsible humans. Are, are you? Uh, Recycling? Probably not, but again... I think the most anger I've ever had on any of my stuff on any platform was when I shared this guy that paints on saran wrap that's wrapped around two trees. People were mad. <laughs> so I took a lot of risk coming to you today with this. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even know. I, I risk the full angers of the internet. So I'm going to take a little bit of my white and I'm going to mix it into my yep. halo blue. If you were anti saran wrap, could you sponge it? You could use paper, you could sponge it, just anything that's going to give you an irregular stamping texture. All right. There's always like six ways. And again, like I said, like you can just use the plastic that they wrapped your surfaces in. Just just not your grocery bags. Hmm. Grocery bags are bad. Why are they bad? Cuz they leave that they leave oh, that um the print? Yeah, they leave that print for you. And I'm blending this in, see how we're getting a nice blend? Because we're trying to say say a thing happened. I think I might want to put out some just straight blue too. Be very enjoyable. Are you ready for that? Sure. Stampy, stampy, stampy. Look, we've got a blotch. You Aren't did we awesome? It's like when you tell your family you're painting and then they come in at this moment and they're like, Oh, it's going well. <laughs> Today it's Rorschach test. <laughs> it exactly is. <laughs> the watchman will now come and confiscate my painting. Getting crazy with coffee in the morning. This is what my husband has dealt with our whole lives. He won't make a big deal about it, but it is when he's had to deal with his whole life. <laughs> oh, that's looking good. So now we've kind of got some little blending of that, right? Uh huh. You just you know come back with your look at that. And then that kind of brighter blue. Oh, we so awesome. And you just go back into the darker blue. And you're like, oh, I'm still awesome. And kind of come down here too. I like to use up this paint and listen to this to the snappy snap see I would be a huge huge successful online personality if I just did this and recorded the sound over and over and over again <laughs> it's funny because it does it, it the mic doesn't actually pick up much of it even when it's close no it, That's such a bummer. I really thought if I stuck my head into my canvas, well, I, everyone would get to share that experience with me. I'll, I'll adjust your mic down. All right. I'm just mixing in some of my purple here, just into that white that I have there. And let's, you know, get that purple stamping here. Purple is fun. All into that blue, kind of mixed in. 
A lot of this gets covered up with the block, but this is just a fun way to start. There we go. Now they can. I like it. <sighs> I'm going to also put aside for recycling. <laughs> I'm going to try this with my hair dryer. <laughs> okay, guys. So, thank you guys for coming and hanging out. It's got a lot of nice big crew here today. This is unusual for a Friday morning. Wow. I don't, you know. Hi, how's it going? What you guys up to today? Seems that you've come by to listen to my wife talk about painting and teach you guys how to make gotchy things on the surfaces. That's kind of cool. And Oh, hey, I should tell you, don't use heat when drawing your surface uh, because it can cause uh, problems like color shift. It can cause heat-induced problems. But So just use it on the cool setting. It's not so bad on pro paints, but don't use heat just in general because it will complicate your life when you're trying to go on to the next layers. Um, maybe later on when you know what that does, you're interested in those effects. But in general, don't use heat because it softens the paint, makes it sticky, and uh, causes color shift. So just use, but you do want to make sure it's thoroughly dry. So Woo! thoroughly dry. Thoroughly dry. Hopefully, because i got to draw on here. i got to draw on here, dudes. All right. So I've got some kids chalk. This is the kind of used on chalkboards. I'm going to use this to sort of block out some of my design space. So now I want to have a keyhole opening that's sort of an arch. And it's going to come over my central figure. Now, because it's sort of um, got that little stamping and leaf pattern and stuff like that that they use, I'm going to definitely, definitely not have to be that specific, which is kind of great. <laughs> we know that there's a little bit of a hill that comes down here. And then there's this nice little bit of an aqua texture that's a happening. A little hill. And then our deer will be about like in that space there. We have a nice little tree. But to do some stuff, we need to make some cool fine lines. Let's see if I mixed my fine liner up well. So here they are, fine line tip applicator. If you don't have this, you could just use a Posca paint pen. Or if you don't have a Posca paint pen, Right, I'll see. I'm worried that I don't have it the right way, but we'll see. Yeah, looks like it's working out pretty well. So we're just going to be talking about some little leaves and vines and things that could be happening here. Okay, this is just really lovely. I just have to tell you, it's working just fine. So what I have in here is um, titanium white from this fluid thing with just a little bit of water. Mm. Kind of like all it is. So little leaves could go on here. Just drawing little leaves in. Little decorative bits, right? Hmm. And it's okay. You want it to be sort of whimsical and playful and hand-drawn. So it's a bit like a doodle is the effect that you're going for. You know, and you can, there's like little curlies. Early cues I'm gonna put in. These little curlies. <sighs> More little curlies, guys. Now, if you're looking for any of these materials, we have links in the descriptions below. We have links. I think I need to link this one back in. But it's fine line applicator, and there's a link in the description uh, to Michael's. And um, they for sure have them in store and online. Oh, neat. I'm gonna make some little, like, little leaf. Just some little kind of magical tribal feeling, you know. 
bits of something. Fun stuff. So one of the things that you'll need to get used to, right, when you're working, mm -hmm. is the idea that um, uh, things don't need to be uh, totally perfect, if that makes sense. Sometimes things are about the totality of the piece. And it's real easy when you're new at painting to get really down into the details of the piece. Mm -hmm. And I would say, especially at this stage, to, um, I'm like using this tool here, so I'm like th uh, thinking hard. My coffee's not enough, man. Um, it's just about relax and enjoy and get all the layers in and let the whole piece come together. Instead of spending, you know, an hour on one little frustrating spot that you're not, you know, necessarily loving or. That's really cute. There we go. I'm getting the hang of it. These come in a bunch of different tips. And you can pretty much put any acrylic ink in them at all. Like at all. And you can put in the fluid acrylics as well. And we're gonna, I'm gonna definitely show you guys all the stuff it'll do. But again, if you don't have that, you could use a Posca pen, mm. Uni Posca, which can be found on Amazon. Could you also use like a fine liner? You could use a, um, an, well, this is a, you could use a fine brush. Yeah, like a fine line brush. You could, yeah, do this by hand with a fine brush. Making these little curly cues, decorative little, little bits of stuff. I like that. Oh, definitely. Now here's the fun. Watch me try to get the cap back on. Yeah. <laughs> Because I'll come back to this in a minute, right? I've got to do layers here. This is all about some layers. So I'm going to bring this in back in. And get it back on. I had to actually put my glasses on to do that. Yeah, you saw that. That happened. <laughs> because I want to take a number four and I want to do something kind of cool here as well. Oh, that's really pretty. That's really popping. It is. So I'm going to take a little bit of my pink and some of my white kind of together and make a light pink. And I'm going to come here and I'm also going to layer in some kind of like vine leaves doing the zippered stroke. I want to layer these decorative bits with some hand painted bits. Just in there as we can. Get a drop of water on my brush. I'm just taking my pink and my white. I might even come up with this line here. And I'm just coming up the lines that I have with them, adding that extra little vining feeling. Just putting those around. I might come between my curly cues. Zipping those in. Creating those layers. Get your layers, yo. Between the curly cues. And if you lose any curly cues that you want to put back, you can always do that. You're not stuck. You're okay. We're just trying to create almost this like last unicorn feeling here. Y'all remember the last unicorn? I do. Well, I know you do. We have to watch it all the time. I'll say that the kids make us. <laughs> and that it's not me. So you can see I'm just touching the brush and pulling it in and it's creating that little leaf effect. Because you need a little leaf effect. And it's also helping us pull some of these lines back a bit into the canvas. Mm. Obscuring them some. So they're there and they have an element in the, in the space, but they're not so forward that that's all we're seeing. And also I think this is going to help us feel like, oh, tree. I definitely want to put these little leaf strokes around, kind of hanging in a little halo. Yeah. So see how I just go touch, pull, touch, pull, yeah. bring it up. 
you know, staggering them. Touch, pull, touch, pull. And I'm going to just fill in that space. Number four round is all this is. There's a link to this too. You're like, oh, that's working really well. My brush is not working that well. Link it. But my big thing is just use the brush you have that you use. If you have tools that you love, hang on to them. I'm just wanting to imply some leaves up here, as you might, right? And that looks pretty cool. I think I can, I think I'm gonna dry that for just a half second. And by a half second, I'm sure she means more than a half second. So, yeah, always just enough time for me to have to go, I'm gonna have to think of something to say, but never enough time for me to complete the thought that I'm going to come up with in the time that, you know, like one of the things that I should do is have a list of notes here so that I would know. Okay, something to talk about is like in the link in the description down below is all the materials that you might need uh, to do this, this painting. You'll find a link to our website. And on the website, there's a project page. That project page has a traceable, the reference images. Uh, it has- What is uh, what? Or the, the project page in the link in the description down below. Mm, keto latte. <laughs> I never know how long you're really going to be gone, so I never know whether to dive into a deep philosophical subject like... Definitely. Vanta Black. <laughs> or should we just lightly touch on the fact that you should not use heat when drying your paint? Any of those things are good. I'm going to put a little white. Uh, the tree is going to be a combination of teal and white. If you don't have teal, but you have phthalo uh, green and phthalo blue, then just make a mix of those two together and add white to them. And they'll make a nice turquoise. It's a slightly different turquoise than that, but it'll get you a close enough effect. I'll show you the, you can kind of see it there when the white gets into it. Mm -hmm. It's gonna give you a turquoise. So don't feel like you can't get in there, okay? All right. If you don't have that color today, just paint along. Don't worry about it. This particular one is um, from the Artist Loft Level 3. I've added a little white to it, and I'm going to come up and do the tree. Let me show you in chalk sort of what's going to happen. There's going to be a motion. This tree has quite a lot of gesture to it. That means the curve of its line. So it's going to come here and then curve back in an S-curve. See the strong S-curve? Mm -hmm. So everything we do with the tree needs to be based off of that. So I might as well just come up here. and start that nonsense. Hmm. You can see how the teal's really popping. Yes. You could also use like a neon blue here. It'd probably do quite well if you have a neon paint. The only issue with the neon paints is that they can fade quickly and there's only really one company that makes a neon that doesn't fade in half a second. All right, so the main base of the trunk, I want to not work all day to get that. Yeah. So I'm going to upsize my brush. This is a number eight cat's tongue. You could use a bright. <laughs> you could use a, a, a number, like this is a number six round. This would work too. You're just trying to upsize your brush so you can get that space covered a bit in a way that you're comfortable. Mm. This isn't one of those spaces where the brush is super critical to the result. You know, sometimes a fan brush might be super critical to a result, but in this particular case, you're just trying to paint in a big old tree. Have we gotten any questions today? Yeah, let me go back up here and saw. I got a paint in this whole tree, so we're here for a second. Oh gosh, we were. Now we've got a link, a link for the description. A lot of the products that we, you you can get here at Michaels. They were just asking. Yeah, and yeah. They're, I've they're, got some discount codes in there. If you're in Canada and you're catching the stream, I've got some discount. You might be up. They might be up because Canada, right? Time change. Mm. They might not be up. Might be like like really early in the morning though, huh? Where in Canada? 
Canada's north, so I mean it depends yeah, it's on. Yeah, going to be like it's east to west that matter. They're not up. They, yes, they're well. well every, some Canadians are up. Y- yes, yeah, some Canadians. <laughs> It's a big old country. <laughs> Earth, <laughs> Earth. Maybe yeah. not the ones well, in Vancouver, but Ontario's way up. <laughs> Is that what you're trying to say? We teach art and not geography. <laughs> no, we do not teach geography. <laughs> but thank goodness, right? Because if you teach anything, you might get in that COPA compliance thing and be <laughs> super miserable. <laughs> so you can kind of see how we got that little thing there. All right. So you were saying? There are people in Canada who are awake. So uh, uh, King's Framing and Art Gallery is listed in there, and there's a discount code. I've got one for the brush guys. I've got some. You can um, find anything here, like Jerry's, Dick Blick. Just, boy, they're just everywhere. Now, there were several folks asking, why so early, Sherpa? And they had their serious face on, like the Joker. Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Why um, so because early? Because we tend to not always catch every time zone, so we're just giving it. <clears throat> and look, look at me. Look how fun I am at, at this time of the morning. I'm so energetic. <laughs> look at a, me. I got look a little crazy with my trunk here. Just kind of go with me. <laughs> <laughs> I just had, had, a, had, had Tina, saw Tina Fey playing you. Look at me. Look how fun I am. Uh, yeah, that'll never happen. <laughs> I amuse myself this early in the morning. You do. See, we're amusing this early in the morning, maybe. It's really, really I'm going to bring a little branch out here. I want to let some of my details show through, but I'm going to be painting this trunk over them. And this wonderful glow, we're going to use value and form and flow to create this sort of like magic effect on the tree, which I like. I'm going to soften that branch there. So I'm just loading the teal and the white. Let's bring one over here. Whoa! So, Donna says that in Hawaii, it's super early. Well, gosh, yeah. Aloha. It's like the morning, right? Mm-hmm. But I love that you're up, Donna. Thank you so much. <laughs> Did our text notify you, wake you up? I'm really sorry for that. <laughs> but see, all the way over in Norway, Hildy says, no, it's it's like 4, it's like 424 in the afternoon. So, I mean, it's totally Hugarten time. It is Hugarten time. The beer. I know that. I know, but people who are watching may not. Oh, I was like, I just always have to hear your feelings on Hugarten, so I was like, I'm well aware. Yeah, I know, but I just realized that, you know, I was like, I just, like, people may not know who that is. They might not be aware. Hey, but, so. Now, I'm going to come back through with my smaller brush and make some more detail little bits on here, but I'm just trying to get this base in. Because it's all about that base. That base. No trouble. Anywho, <laughs> it's a trap. Just flowing these branches off. Things to think about when you're new to painting is taking these brush strokes in long, flowing movements and letting things really kind of go. And notice that I'm taking these branches past that, po- oh, that's so pretty, past that point that I'm painting. This is one of those pieces that's going to be prettier in acrylic. Mm. It just has that potentiality. I'm just getting that base cover. You'll leave this up on replay? Yeah. So what will happen with this, all of the places this will go, this is if you follow the link to the Facebook watch, you can find these easy. You can find them in the video tab. Um, We are going to premiere it um, on YouTube at some point. It'll get scheduled out. We'll download it and I'll put it up and... There'll be a thumbnail. It might be a month out. It might be a month and a half out, but it will make it to YouTube. And premieres are cool because it's the video playing, but I come in in live chat. So it's a great time to ask me specifically a question. Mm -hmm. And we do those Wednesday at 6 p.m. on YouTube. So, you know, come by and grab one of those and you can you can find the premieres and just follow them and know when they are. And, And we'll also text notify you. Yes. If you want to be notified by text. Yes. But not if you don't. Don't sign up if you don't want to know. (laughs) So I'm switching back to my four so I can do some like little other decorative little branches. I like getting all these little guys in. It's very relaxing, isn't it? 
I can only imagine. You can only imagine? Well, that's good because this is an art show and that's what we use here is imagination, sir. Imagination, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was peripheral vision and multitasking, but who knew? Oh, <laughs> uh, right there. That's why we're married. He got sass. Reminds me of Mr. Knightley. <laughs> No, I'm not really a fan of Darcy, but I do like Mr. Knightley and the <laughs> sassy sass. So I married one of those. Good decision on my part, I feel. <sighs> <laughs> I am so much like more like, woo! You are too. I just like, I love it. I love it. People are going to be like, have you seen the creative with coffee? It's a whole nother vibe. <laughs> Just on the toe of my brush, brushing back and forth. So that's how I'm controlling that. If you've never like loaded a brush, you may not catch. I'll do weird things like grab a drop of water and swirl it around with the brush and then kind of pull it back into the belly. I am flipping the brush, trying to press and load the paint into all sides. These are things that can mess with new people. And just aggravate their day. Mm. I'm just enjoying putting all these little branches in. Who's got branches? This tree got branches. When you feel like you've got enough branches, you can stop. I don't quite yet. Feel like I've got enough branches, but I'm getting there. <clears throat> and then once I get all that in, then I've got to put in some highlights and some stuff that I'm going to white line. So that's going to be about getting into my white paint and getting lighter values of my aqua. So, like maybe we come here and then come down a branch. And we'll make a little kind of keyhole. Getting some of that white, making it lighter. But you don't want it totally pure white because you want the white liner to really pop. Mm. Or your pen or whatever you're using. And then where I want to have like maybe a darker kind of hole. Like see how I'm like using the pure pigment to sort of darken that? And then if I need to get it even darker, I can come over into that turquoise and watch this. What? That's right. That's how we can play. That's for the raccoon. For the raccoons? What's for the raccoons? The little hidey hole you made. Oh, wow. Well, I didn't know I was, like, inviting vermin. <laughs> hey, now. <laughs> Sorry, that was a Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm not actually attacking the very popular and well-loved by the internet uh, Trash Panda. <laughs> I am Groot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just making these wonderful little shapes and brushing these through. Thinning it out and just getting lots and lots of different little values. Coming through this tree. Can we do that? Yes, we can. When can we do it? Anytime we want. A really pretty tree, isn't it? Yeah. Bringing this really little nice. white up here right now. I'm adding the white highlights to some places. Don't want it everywhere. I 
little brush and water. Swirl that paint around, I say. Around that branch. So I'm just trying to create these little value spaces where the tree starts to have lights and darks and come here and get some of this nice turquoise that we made, which was the phthalo blue and the phthalo green. And I'm just adding these little bits of light and dark that I can, you know, white line mm -hmm. and make examples of exaggerate you know we like to exaggerate things as you do pulling in some you know different darker values Some on that branch. This takes a minute. But you've got a minute, right? You're painting in the morning. Yeah. You got all day. You don't got to know where you got to be, right? <laughs> Lots of good ideas on, on this painting. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Tell me some. Like adding fairies. Oh, yeah. Like making the deer a unicorn or a dragon. Yeah. Maybe instead of black around the outside, like a dark purple. Oh, that would be good, too. You know, that's the part when I get asked, people go, well, I, you know, I paint with tutorials and I don't feel confident painting on my own yet. But those little moments when you're like, man, I wish that was purple. That is your inner artist happening right there. So kind of like if you're trying to get to a space where you're like not doing tutorials anymore. Not that I ever want that to happen because I certainly love to have you here. But if you were working towards that goal. Listen to those inner creative moments, those little muses. Just playing with and exaggerating value changes. You know, trying to get them to be more interesting. That's looking pretty good. Mm -hmm. It's just a general little swishiness. Get swishy. <laughs> Get swishy with it. That's turned out pretty good. Uh, 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 uh. Get swishy with it. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to have some coffee because I haven't had coffee. You know, I've been sitting here just watching this, doing the switching. I get pretty I get pretty into this because I, you know, I think that it, it just comes out so pretty. So I end up, I really am a fan of just watching her paint. All the little brush strokes, how they come together. You'll notice that there's, you know, there's some texture on that. That, and so especially as you're drying, make sure you uh, you completely dry those layers. Otherwise, uh, as you add subsequent layers, it will smear, and can pick up. That's not so good. So you don't really want that. Sip your coffee. Sip. I will sip my coffee. Or whatever morning beverage is your morning beverage. Oh, that's looking quite nice, isn't it? Not half bad. I'm liking it. Hopefully you're liking it too. How's your coffee or your tea or your orange juice mm -hmm. or your apple juice or your water? Yeah. Or your fiber. Mm -hmm. Just wherever you're at. <laughs> Just coffee for me right now is what. Uh, you <sighs> so when I have this done, you take your detail brush. Yeah. That you do fine lines with. You could take your paint pen or. Your fine liner. What are you doing over there? And we're going to come here and we're going to make some decorative lines. That's that same bottle thing you were using earlier. This is the same thing I was using earlier. This is where I was like, man, I hope I didn't mix it too thin. And that's the fluid white paint with just a little bit of water in it. 
Yeah, fluid white paint with a little bit of water in it. It's like you, I use this because the pigment loads are so high, so, so high that even if I thin it, it's going to stay very pigmented, but mm -hmm. you could use this. What was that? I missed it. Decor at Americana. Oh, okay. Now I'm just trying to make sure that I'm following these lines that I put out earlier. Kind of creating a, a whimsical space. Squeezing the little bottle just a little bit as I go. And just That's, making these little... So you're squeezing it out. It doesn't just flow. It, I have it mixed where I've got to squeeze it out, so mine does not just flow. If you used ink, yeah. I imagine it would come out really quickly, but I would then do it flat. I would do this flat. I wouldn't do it vertical. Yeah, yours looks a little impasto. Yeah, that's because I knew I was going to be on a vertical, and if I did, like, pure inks, where would I be? It's very thick. I'm just trying to create these nice little flowing lines. I just threw that out there. What does impasto mean? Impasto means that I'm painting in a thick application where you can really see the depth of the paint works best with heavy body paint. Hmm. Because that's why heavy body is heavy body is it doesn't shrink as it dries. That's what they're really saying. I'm just trying to have nice loops. You know, I'll put this up on the web page when it's done so you can use it as a reference if you want to see exactly how I did it. Let's we'll see how we're doing so far. Looking pretty great. Looks shockingly good. Yeah. It's like, man, it felt like it was going to be a hot mess, but then it came together. It came together, and that's. Definitely what happens is you'll be painting and things will just come together. And sometimes I'm just trying to go long on a line. So if you've been wondering what these things were, that's what these little bottles are about. And how this compares to a Posca pen is it's probably a more effective tool for what it is, right? For what it's for, for making lines and paint. Mm. And it doesn't ever clog because it's got that little needle thing that goes into it that prevents clogging. In the tip? Yeah. I mean, in the cap? But it is a little more challenging to use, like, at first to just sort of get used to it. The way it loads or the way that it wants to put out the paint. Once you get used to it though, you know, it's why you see a lot, a lot of crafters will use this tool because it's just effective. In fact, always pay attention to what the crafters are using. <laughs> they don't mess around. <laughs> They've always got their eye on the new stuff. They do, man. All right, now I'm going to dry that before it all gets away from me. All right. Yep, just make sure you thoroughly dry it because those, and here especially, you, you may have to be careful to not use the high wind settings because you can cause the your your wet paint to run, to, to smear and kind of make a spray splotchy thing. And that can be really cool. Cinnamon does that intentionally on some pieces. But here, when you're just drying it, you that may not want that to happen. So be very careful to use it on low air settings. Uh, or may you just may just want to let it air dry. Uh, because that that will, you know, just give it an hour to dry. Sometimes maybe better than, you know, trying to go in there and force use forced air, which can blow that paint all over the surface, which just... I don't know why I'm so drilled down on, I guess because it would really kind of 
not be cool. But if it if it happens, don't worry. You can touch it up. Uh, I'm sure Cinnamon, you know, she's showed you guys lots how you just go back in there and touch things up with your uh, background paint and just go, t go over anything you didn't like. But, yeah. That's why I'm trying to help remind you to not do that. Man, it's a good thing that I had something like that to just talk about because she's taking a long time to dry this. I did not expect her to be gone this long. So wax philosophical about the slow drying of paint. Boy, is that not karmic. Uh, <laughs> it's early in the morning. I So... <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> yeah. So it's longer to dry. I'm sorry, babe. It's okay. You, it's I, because these thick drops, which they're probably still not dry. I was there's just, a lot of moisture in that paint because um, I added the water and it was already pretty wet. So I can skin it, which means there's an acrylic skin over it. But I have to remember anywhere those paints are in a thick drop, they probably will pop like a paint blister. Mm. Things to know. Things right? to know. Now in just personal self amusement, I'm going to use something called Chroma Pearl Yellow by uh, Holbein. I had we're trying to get it where we have we can sell it off of our store, so you guys can get it because it's it's only really available sometimes on eBay. Mm. And it is, but you could use glitter paint. This is just really good glitter paint. So I'm going to add some of this little iridescent shimmer to my tree. Yeah. Super happy with that. And I'm not going to put it everywhere. If you decide to do a glitter paint or somehow magic this up, because I imagine many of you would be making this as a gift for some loved one in your life. So what you would want is just a nice acrylic product that had glitter in it. Um, I know Deco has a bunch. Um, Amsterdam um, has a bunch. A lot of companies have uh, a glitter suspended in an acrylic emulsion. So I wouldn't necessarily use white glue and glitter in it. I wouldn't do that. But I, I would find just any, you know, acrylic paint product that has that. Could you use like uh, like that polymer, like, like GAC? Yeah, glitter? you could use like GAC with glitter, like a polymer. Hmm. So let's see if I can show you what what's happening here. Jonathan. Yeah, that's let me let me. There we go. Right there. See that shimmer? Oh, it's a yeah. little bit. It just creates to the eye quite a lot of little drama. And makes this feel like an even more super magical little tree. That's why you would bother. All hmm. right. Guess what? What? We're going to paint the canvas black. You're going to do the outside trim? A little bit. So I'm going to come up and I'm just going to get these outer edges black. Might as well paint this black while I'm at it. <laughs> for the next filming. <laughs> just another layer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like, and then it's just ready for the next filming, right? Now, I know that I'm going to be coming around the branches, but the last little bit I will sponge in. Ah. To give it that kind of crazy texture. You're just going to block in the outsides a little yeah. bit. Yeah. I don't want to sponge the whole thing. That'd be a, be a long part of my day. And I've got my little arch here already kind of drawn in. So I just come about a quarter of an inch off what I drew in, if that makes sense to you. <laughs> just convenient that it's the same color. It really is. I'm quite happy with the fact that it is. And so I'm going to bring this down just a little bit down the sides. Because I've got to come up with that mid turquoise, right? Across. And those I, different blues. Do you? Yep. But I got to get this layer in right now. 
So this painting, it's really about understanding the layers that are involved in making it. Hmm. Now I'm going to take it's, a little sea sponge, this like, little fellow here. You can get these craft sponges. You could also just use a kitchen sponge. You just want something that gives you that kind of weird little texture. You could use more of your saran wrap. But I like the sponge. Because it gives me that uneven, it's almost like foliage. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. In art, we'd have so many choices, don't we? Just sponge around. The trick, if you're going to, these are not expensive. You shouldn't spend more than three, four dollars on them. Um, just watch that when you're on Amazon because sometimes they price gouge a little bit, some of the sellers. Mm. If an object is more popular, they uh, catch that train and think, oh, now's the moment. I'm wondering if it's not a robot. It could be doing doing it arbitrage. It could be, but I've I've seen my I've seen like my brushes be like three hundred dollars. <laughs> like I felt like writing people and being like, "Don't buy that." <laughs> yeah, that I, is not the price. I, I think that there's a there's software arbitrage happening out there. Possibly, yeah. So you can see that we kind of have that there. Definitely rinse your sponge out. And my next trick would be right in this space. If I was just trying to, you know, kind of tie it all together, is to get my number four round. And make some little leaf shapes. See what I'm doing? Oh, yeah. Hold on a second. Let me get a little closer to that. You're just fast. I'm just fast. Just here and there. A few little leaves. By the way, you can do this keyhole effect with many, many different scenes. This is a nice, complicated, gorgeous, mystical, magical scene. But you could do this with like just a simple sunset and get a similar happy kind of outcome. You're just making those little leaves. Just here and there. Just some leaves going around. And then uh, maybe even some little twigs. Nah, I don't really like the twigs. I like just the leaves. No, I mean, like, sometimes you'll do something and you're like, I don't like the twigs. It doesn't look good. All right. So I just took the twigs away. The twigs. This is not going to make John happy, but I got to dry it again. All right. <laughs> leave just me do. out here. Just leave me hanging out here all alone. This is the most I've talked in an episode with you guys in a while. But oh, we've had a pretty good crew out here. So thank you guys for coming. You know, it's always really, really nice to be able to do this. You know, Cinnamon and I love just being able to go live and hang out with you guys and do this so thank you for coming being part of our art journey we love seeing you guys so thank you very much and don't forget to leave comments um both here in the live and afterwards on our channel uh cinnamon always likes to follow up and see those so even if i miss your comment here while we're live don't forget she'll she'll follow up and make sure that she sees some of those afterwards we just had to take the chat away from her because if uh, I let her see the chat during the live show. Oh, she... yeah, it's just over. There's no live show. It's just me chatting with y'all. Yep. Which is why it's good to come by the premieres. Because <laughs> that's when I just sit and chat. That's right. Yeah. Or good time leave to a comment. It. Because you'll come back and catch the ones that I miss. Exactly. So I've got myself some more saran wrap. And I'm going to come into what's left of my little turquoise here. And let's. What are you doing? Come across here. And get that next layer of. Oh. Right. Is there any? Is there any of that left? There's not any of that left. We have to make some more of that. I'll get some of this though. What'd you get? Uh, some of the blue and white oh. that I had from earlier. The light blue. Yeah. So That's... just making some different. Um. Get some of this with the white. Like layers of magic. Yeah. This is a little magic energy that's coming there. Oh, it's so magical. It did. It just. It's real fun. I mean, I'm going to get some of my glitter paint too, because why not? <laughs> why not? Just throw some glitter in. Well, I mean, 
This stuff is pricey, so. As well, I'm use, it. use it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's happening. And there's a, you talk about this. When you use the paint throughout the work, it adds a continuity. It really does. It, it makes it feel more believable to the piece. Don't kill me. I got to do another dry layer. That's okay. Hey, sure. I need some. I yes. need another cup. I do That's too. That's what I need right now. It's actually time in the day for me for my second cup of coffee. Where is it for you? Maybe it's your second cup of tea. Maybe it's your next. Maybe you're already on your treadmill going, this woman is just really, really needs more treadmill time. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> All right, guys. So thank you for joining us again. Uh, you know, this is one of those things where, uh, man, that's so pretty. I, th I'm always so amazed at some of the different techniques that we end up doing here. But this white lining one really turned out really nice this time. So, and the glitter, if you haven't had a chance to check that uh, holographic paint out from Holbein, it really is cool. Uh, check in the link in the descriptions down below. Uh, sometimes there are some demo days at your local uh, art supply store. So if you'll reach out to them and ask the, the manager if they carry Holbein and if they do, when they'll do a demo, sometimes they'll put those together. So you can ask about that. What else? Uh, make sure if you're going to leave your husband live. What? Uh, I, was I just didn't saying, do nothing to you. If you're going to leave your husband live for a long time, mm -hmm. unscripted, on a show. That's okay. You don't need to be scripted. With you nothing do you. to talk about. You speak your truth, baby. You should leave notes. Just speak your truth. I'm making up some more phthalo turquoise, like you do, and I'll put out some more white paint, and then we're gonna sketch in our deer a little bit. You guys can use the traceable. I usually make a tra I usually have these up before. I'll post it like right after I just get a chance to edit it all in before the live. So you don't have to be able to just draw this in. Um, that's not required in art. Uh, sometimes there's a thought that you have to like freehand things in for it to be real art, or you're cheating. But uh, transfer, projection, gritting, these are all just art techniques that you use to get your concepts and ideas out of your head onto a canvas, onto a surface, into a space. So none of them are cheating. Mm. None of them. That was an interesting question. Mm. Um, could you use glitter nail polish? Um, I don't know why not, but I don't know why yes. So what I would say is I would test some nail polish over my acrylic surface and see how it adheres. As long as the acrylic from your nail polish is able to bond to the acrylic, it could be okay. And as long as it's non-cracking and flexible, which I believe nail polish is, and they're a similar polymer to each other. So they have some deep chemical differences. There mm. are some similarities. So you test. Test. Because it's probably going to vary from nail polish to nail polish yeah. and from paint maker to paint maker. Yeah. So I just super hard to know at this stage. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get some of my turquoise, my dark, dark turquoise. And I have this sort of feeling that I want to come here. Where are you? And I'm going to just oh, you're up there. also add some. Oh, that's what you're doing. Dark leaves. Sorry. It's just bugging me. You were, you said we were going to go on to do the deer. And then you I know some it's leaves. just been it's been bugging me, and you didn't wrangle me well enough. Right. These are very dark. It's almost the same value as the tree. Just I wanted sort of a transitional space in the blend where there was maybe a secondary color. If that makes yeah. sense. And I had to have some turquoise for this front run of texture when I put the deer in. But just so that it's not just a blank keyhole. Because that's just me. It doesn't have to be you. It was just bugging me. I just wanted a little bit of visual something. All right. Yeah, I, I get it. it Do does, you get it? You zhuzhed it up for I sure. I zhuzhed it. Okay. So this crazy hot mess. We've got a deer. And we have to figure out where we want to put him. And we have this beautiful tree. And we have to figure out what we want to lose in our beautiful tree. Yeah. It's never my favorite part. All right. I know. It's just like, man. So I have to decide where do you go. So I may actually, because I want to keep my tree, move my deer over here. Mm. Stand aside, sir. I'll give you guys two traceables, one that are exactly like the reference and one that's about what I'm about to do, because I just want <laughs> a better deer. We have deviated from the plan. 
So I'm just pre-sketching this in. I make a little kind of squished oval for his head, and I've got to bring this little neck out, you know, and then there's this part to the back that happens, which is pretty cool. They have this really cool kind of back thing. Chest. And then down. Sloping back. Leg. And then this here should come to a couple of legs. And then you've got horns. Horn. All right. So I know where that is now. I feel confident to put that in in black paint. Huh? Did you offset him? I did. Because I like my tree. <laughs> yeah. And I don't want to take my tree away. So I'm a uh, artist that likes my own work, I guess. <laughs> I don't want to lose all my pretty work. Stand aside, dear. I'm losing a little bit of my fun leaves, but I'll just add some back up there. So now I've got my little sketch in where I kind of know where I'm going. Then I can come in with my like little black paint. Again, if you're not confident in your freehanding of things, just go ahead and use the traceable. And that's what you just do. Just go ahead and use the traceable. And I'll put my little leaves back. If you overpaint in any way where you feel like, oh man, I went too far, just come back with a wet brush and remove the mark mm. before it's dry. After it's dry, you have to let it dry all the way and then paint it back out with a background color. I get all mesmerized when you start painting in the shapes. Because it's like I like watching them unfold. Yeah, it's like, man, come there's a thing that's happening. Who knows? I'm super focused. Silhouette deer kind of leg. <laughs> I'll tell you, here's a little thing. Just if you've got a knee somewhere, it's got to have a matching knee. It's, you're just like. You're pretty confident. You're just like, yeah, I got it. Just putting it in there. I don't know. It could be like false. Con it could be like a, a mistaken confidence. <laughs> we'll see how it works out. Could be. That's a strange reindeer, Sherpa. Could be. You know, they happen as they happen. You know, I just tend to. And I paint it in. If it gets weird, make it a mystical creature. <laughs> it's a dragon. <laughs> I'm just saying, you've got lots of chances to like fix anything that you want to fix, however you want to fix it. It's not a deer, it's a llama. It's a something. And like I said, if you want to like come in here and be like, no, your back should be down, you can absolutely start to move it back down. Oh, neat. Since I've got to put in the back again anyways, the mm. leaves, I might as well move everything where I want it. And I may have to come through with some, like, lining and stuff to help him pop. Because ah. I moved him back. But again, it was bugging me. But if you want to line him, then you can line him. That, well, it's true. Okay, so the ears are really awesome. I'm going to come out with, like, a little ear. Your ears have that wonderful sort of, I guess, uh, a lot of evolutionary uh, directive here. They want to know what's moving in the forest. They really do, man. There we go. First antler. I just kind of take that brush stroke up and curve it around. You know, and then you, you got to get those first little antlers in. Mm-hmm. And then off, and there's a, there's a little one coming down here. And you can catch one right there. So 
So whatever you need to do. Extend that back out. And so whenever I've got to erase, that's what I do is I just come back with a clean brush and water. Erase it a little bit. Erase it a little bit and put it back where I want it. Because sometimes on something like this, like a small amount of paint makes a big difference mm. to the overall look of everything. I really, really want to put one there, so I'm going to, just for balance, it's bugging me. All right, I have to put some more antlers up here. Woo, I got a little crazy with that one. <laughs> You'll have the traceable up after the show, right? Yeah, I'll put the traceable up after the show. Because you're sort of freehanding this one, so we'll have I'm just to... freehanding this little sucker in. So you'll make the traceable up and then have that up there for everybody and... Oh. Yeah, I'll be fine. Some people were just like, I can't find it on the page. I'm like, well, I will get it there. We'll I had there made one before. I just didn't get it up before the show. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's not your fault. It's not there yet. But we'll be there soon. Yeah. If you're time traveling and you're watching this now, chances are it's in there. But if you're watching it right now, then it's not there. Just relative. To something. Something. All right, we got some antlers coming up of some kind. Give them some little, oh, I got some furry furs. Chest coming out, bumping out as they do. Because they do, man. Mm -hmm. They got these little chest things coming out. Thicken that leg right there. And let's put in some hind legs. So like this one can come here. And again, I'm just freehanding this little sucker in. But I will, if the knees are here, I know I'm gonna put the hawk in kind of a similar area. The bend of the back leg. That you might have. And a little hawk in. There's one of those. If I get in one more leg, he's going to look somewhat deer-like. He will. <laughs> somewhat, anyways. You have made a deer. I will have made a deer. That we don't have to call dragon. That you don't have to call dragon. Theoretically. Theoretically. That, le that last leg could go wrong. It could be disco deer. He could be Disco Deer. Don't heckle me. <laughs> <laughs> We're too close to things going wrong. <laughs> when it goes wrong, it goes so wrong. <laughs> when it goes wrong, it goes so wrong. It was all cool. Just that one leg shooting out to the side. Disco Deer. Now, I want his little bum bum to show a bit more. I'm going to go ahead and get some of my purple that I have over here. And I'm going to I just take with my brush and sort of provide some contrast. Yeah. And I'm tapping up and down to kind of match match the color yeah. that I have. Blend it here. And I'm done. Yeah. I'm just going to move this back a bit. And I'll show you a cool trick on how I hide it. This is a thing um, I see happen a lot in time lapses mm. that I think um, if you don't know what they are, you wouldn't even know oh, that they yeah. happened. I'm going to definitely shorten that one up a bit. See how I'm done? 
I'm hiding it. It's what you do sometimes. You just hide it. It's in purple, so turquoise. <laughs> Makes an interesting purple. See? Mm. So there's a I didn't even have to go get more dots. And as I let that dry, I can come in and um put my little leaves back in a way where I'm more decoratively seeing them. Yeah. I feel like deers have tails, so I put one on there. Liz is having a lovely surreal moment as she's sitting outside on her front patio watching deer in her front yard oh, really? while she's watching you paint a deer in your <laughs> What do the deer think? Do they think I'm doing a good or a bad job? <laughs> it's the surreal deer. Just hold up the screen to them and be like, is it a good representation of your community? <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> And so I will say, yes, I like this deer. Turned out pretty good. I, I especially like the way that background. She always does such cool and interesting stuff with this stuff. And I I never see it coming. So this is pretty neat for me too. I I saw her working on this one yesterday, I think it was, the design, but I didn't didn't have any idea that it was gonna look this cool. Okay. I still have some more of your yeah I still do so I'm gonna come here and just make sure it's not so much loaded that's gonna all run out just come here and relief the leaves Where we need to. So now there's some leaves there, and there's some stuff. If you feel like you want to white line your deer, you can. I don't feel like I need to. No, he turned out pretty good. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with him. So now all we have is the last two layers, which we're going to do with turquoise. So get yourself a little story unwrap or the wrapping to your thing, or sponge, whatever you're using for your texture. I'm following that up, and I'm going to take a, a little of the white into my aqua. I still want it to be quite dark. I just want it to show. So there it is. And let's put this on the edge here. It's like that kind of green aqua, isn't it? Yeah. Taking my number four brush, I'm going to come up the silhouette with mm. a little bit of the green. Kind of blending. That's cool. Into his little deer legs. Just a little bit. It's just a little touch, makes a big difference. Nice dark green. We're just making another little layer of bushes. And then, let's see if I can get just right into the black. Come in and. Get that sort of off canter little edge there. All right. Finish the rest with the big brush. Hmm. Tap in, make sure that edge is nice and uneven and finished off. Looks like it goes.
just using this to paint in solid the background. And then you're just going to come back again with a little bit of stamping. Get blending in? Yeah, between uh, the background you just painted in and that. And that should leave you with this fantasy landscape that you just did in acrylic paint. Wow, that turned out great. Didn't that come out Everyone awesome? Everyone thinks this is extra beautiful. This is extra beautiful. I like this one. What a crazy, fun, weird painting to do, you right? sign that one. Oh, man. Should we? Should we sign it? Yeah. All right. I guess I will. Sign it. Sign it. What are you going to sign it with? I'm going to sign it with a signature brush because I would not do a good job with the liner. I got a dry little spot right here. All right. You dry a little spot. She's just a dry little spot down there so that, and that's so that when she puts the white down, it doesn't uh, pick up the colors underneath it. So that can be. It can be not fun, especially when you're and when you're painting on on that. So make sure your lower layers are dry, and uh, don't use heat. You've heard me say that before. All right. So I'm gonna take a little bit of my turquoise and oh. um, I want some fluid paint. So hey, let's put out some of the fine liner paint. That's nice and thin, isn't it? It's already pre-thinned for me. Make a nice light turquoise. So what I try to do is not use colors that were not present in the painting. Hmm. And I try not to pick something that is going to disrupt the whole design. And you can do that with your signature. You just want to sign in a way that considers your artwork. Yeah. But still lets people know who made it. So you see that's there, you can see it, I might, Fix my E a little bit, but it's not. Taking over the whole canvas. How does everybody love today? Oh, Coffee this is a fantastic. and being creative. Mm -hmm. What a way to kick off the day, right? This is great. We should do this again. Well, we are. Are we? Fridays on Facebook. Come meet us. At 6 a.m. for the live. Who are you? And the are Chirpa. And, <laughs> <laughs> and if you can't make those, we have premieres on YouTube on Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. Um, that's where this plays. And I'll answer questions in chat live. So if you were doing this project or got stuck somewhere or if something happened you needed to ask me about, that's a great time to do that. That's every Wednesday. If you'd like to join us for our next live, we have one tomorrow. Oh, oh, and I need you guys to do something. What's that? Are you guys ready? Sure. Okay, so this is releasing today at <gasps> 2 o'clock. Isn't that pretty? You guys like it? I like it. Okay, that's going to be over on our Art Therapy channel, which oh. is the Art Sherpa Retreat on YouTube. That's where I've seen this before. The Art Sherpa Retreat. Okay. Now, the Art Sherpa is the main lesson channel has 900 of these. Actually, it's a thousand now. Thousands of these full lessons. Mm -hmm. This one is piano music and it's like wonderful and it's going to be premiere so you can come live chat with me there too. If you wanted to ask me some questions about today, that would be fantastic. Go by and check that out because I'm really proud of it and I think it's really cool. And it may become a full lesson if everybody likes it enough over on the retreat, then I pop it over to the, yeah, and to the main stuff and make it a lesson. You come around front. Hmm. So. If they wanted to catch that video, we're going to text notice, text notify people. So That's right. We're going to text notify anybody today that wants to catch that and come chat with me. It's a short window. It's going to go right on at 2 o'clock Central Standard Time and because uh, it's a premiere, so it just goes right out. And I will be there, and we'll text you uh, right before it happens. And I would love it if you could join me for that. Come in and ask some questions. I'll try to get answer as many as I can. Guys, I'm so proud of this piece. This turned out great. Oh, wait, you know what? I almost forgot to do the whole I was enjoying painting so much. I forgot. It's time for Texas Snowflakes. Because <gasps> we did it. We, we did it. We painted a painting. Yes, we did it. We did it. We painted this crazy weird painting and it didn't stop us. We handled all our challenges and we were awesome in every way. I cannot wait to see you later. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you in an easel really soon. Bye-bye.